So uh, first of all, so let's start with the AWS. Okay, what will be the agenda of the webinars? Okay, so this actually, uh, this uh, journey is, begins with our AWS certification course that is uh, Architect Associate Certification course. Okay, but before uh, starting the deep dive of AWS, what we need to understand is, so what is exactly the AWS is? Why we require AWS? Okay. But nowadays, everyone is uh, getting uh, migrated to AWS, their application. Most of the organizations, okay, either AWS or any other cloud providers. <clears throat> but before that, can anyone, if you guys are aware, can anyone tell me what is the meaning of cloud computing? Okay, if you are aware, any, any idea, any knowledge, anyone, what is the cloud computing is? Why cloud computing is essential nowadays? Anyone? See this, I want, if you know, if you know that what is exactly the cloud computing is why. So because why we relate this AWS with cloud computing, because AWS is a cloud provider. What is AWS? It is a cloud providers, cloud service providers. Okay. Can anyone tell me what is cloud? Yeah. If you guys are aware, I'm waiting for your responses. I'm, I, uh, am I audible for everyone? <coughs> Guys, what is the cloud, guys? What is cloud computing? Hello. Yes. Uh, um, I'm, 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 uh, you are not clearly. Can you uh, can you speak uh, again, please? Can you repeat? Not able to hear uh, properly. Hello. Yeah, a web application, a cloud computing is a web application whereby a, an IT person can take advantage of by deploying a web based solution for businesses and for other people that need this service like a like a banking software so everything is based on the cloud so without the cloud so both customer and the bank won't be able to communicate better Okay. Any other? Yeah, correct. Any other answer? Anyone? Yeah, you can please uh, unmute yourself and speak out, guys. What is cloud computing is? Yeah, Tomer is a trusted store data in a cloud, which is easy for everyone to access remotely from anywhere. Yes. What is the difference between the cloud and internet? Yeah. Yeah, that is a question. So internet is what? Internet we are using for different things. So cloud is like it is a services, it will provide a different services. We like we can say it will provide the storage services, it will provide the uh, security related services. So internet is a different internet is just for what we can say we require internet connection for uh, using this cloud services. Okay, so internet connection is different cloud is different cloud is basically dealing with the services. So there will be different kind types of services are there. They can provide, uh, as we, as everyone know, I think might be know that uh, they can provide infrastructure as a service. They can provide software as a service. They can provide platform as a service. So these are different services provided in cloud. And what is the role of internet in this uh, uh, Prasad? So basically internet we can use to uh, perform our uh, activities, like say uh, mailing kinds of activities are there, some working related activities are there. So internet is basically connection requirement, it, connection, internet connection we must have if you want to use this cloud services. Okay, so that is the thing. Uh, yes, Koma, you're right. Uh, any other answer related to cloud computing? Okay, what is cloud computing? Anyone? Good afternoon, if I may. Yeah. Yeah, this is Alfonso. Cloud computing is, uh, is essentially a... Uh, an environment which is running in the internet. It's, uh, yes, uh, correct. Which uh, is because yeah, why, are, yeah. using the cloud services, we require internet. That is the thing. 
okay without infinite yeah. connection we can't use okay so uh, yeah is correct correct okay so as we discuss what is cloud computing so cloud computing is basically it will provide the services to us in terms of infrastructure in terms of platform in terms of software okay so if i talk about infrastructure okay if cloud say one cloud is an infrastructure service provider so what it means can anyone tell me what is what you mean by infrastructure if you are aware what is meaning of infrastructure infrastructure is a uh pretty much the the where the application runs no? servers networks uh, okay. uh even even vir virtual machines okay okay yes correct so just one question for everyone let's say suppose if i if i conclude that let's say suppose if i want to uh, build up an application okay so what will be the essential thing to build that application to maintain that application any application either it should be uh mobile application either it should be web application desktop application it might be anything so what will be the required things to maintain that application or to uh what we can say to carry that application or yeah we require some software we require some servers correct we require databases we require uh we can say uh server much hardware storage devices okay so we require routers okay there are may, many more physical hardware devices hardware setup to require okay so that is the thing right so for uh, maintain any application we require a lots of physical devices hard devices software servers all these things okay so this is nothing but what this is called as infrastructure so this infrastructure will be So this infrastructure will be provided by cloud service provider in the infrastructure as a service domain. Okay, so infrastructure contains servers, infrastructure contains now whatever we can say, uh, subnets, routers, gateways. Okay, so these are called as infrastructure. So these all infrastructure will be provided by this cloud provider. Second service that is provided by cloud provider is service as a so software as a service. Okay or we can say platform as a service. So let's say directly one example, let's say before this cloud is popular. Okay, this cloud is popular. So what we are doing, suppose let's say, suppose if I want to store some documents, my important documents. So how we can store that important documents? If cloud is not there, the scenario before the cloud. So how we can store any documents? So we need to create yes, files, in folders. A personal drive. Local, local server. Yeah, either we can use pen drive, right? Pen drive, uh, SSD, hard disk, uh, local machines. Okay, we can store our files on these local machines. But if cloud services are introduced, we can store the data on the cloud services. But because see, directly or indirectly, we using the cloud services previously as well. So if you are aware with the that uh, OneDrive, OneDrive is there, then Google Drive is there, then Dropbox is there. Okay, so these are the example of the cloud storage services that we are using nowadays and means from many years. Okay, so this is about the, uh, what we can say, these are nothing but services that is provided by the clouds. Okay, if I talk about platform as a service, so what platform? Platform means they are providing some tools, okay. They are providing that to, in that tool we can able to, uh, what we can say, we can able to develop our application or we can able to test our application. So these tools will be provided by this cloud providers that is called platform as a service. They can give one platform to us and on that platform, we can able to uh, develop our code, test our code or perform uh, the operations related to code of applications. So these are platform as a service. Now, what is the third part? Third part is a software as a service. So they can provide some software for us and where we can able to use that is the example of the software as a service how many of you are aware with the office 365 microsoft office 36 365 Every, anyone uh, use that uh, 365 office 365 is one of the software as a service that is provided by cloud cloud provider okay so so basically they can provide software we can work with those software and 
that's it so that is the mechanism basically the cloud provider will does so these three type three categories are there infrastructure software and platform so this is about the cloud service providers types of services provided by the cloud providers okay so now next thing that we're going to discuss is why we relate this aws because aws is what aws is a cloud service provider as we already discussed so it will uh in the aws platform we have a multiple services okay multiple means more than 200 plus services we have okay that we can in, uh, integrate in our application to make our application continuously uh, available and continuously it should be uh, what we can say it should be accessible for the all users outside the world okay so we can maintain our application with this aws cloud provider services okay so now if i discuss about the cloud provider next question come into mind so how we have can we have a different types of cloud where cloud providers we have yes we have a different cloud providers okay let me show you so let's say if i talk about here let me share the screen just one minute so if i talk let's say okay fine so here let's say if i talk about the cloud provider so we we have a different cloud providers okay who will be providing this cloud services let's say if i talk about aws one of the popular one aws is one of the popular service that we can use as a cloud provider service uh, then we if you are aware i think microsoft uh, azure is also there okay azure is also there so azure is what azure is also used to provide the cloud related services okay then after that azure uh, we can discuss about alibaba is there okay then after that we have ibm cloud is there so we have different different cloud providers are there but why aws is popular because see uh, the 500 fortune 500 companies can trust aws and many more organization nowadays are uh, trusting with aws that they can provide a better solutions to their application they can provide better services to their applications so that is the reason aws is growing in the industry okay that is about the actual uh we can say that the fundamentals of, of of aws but first we need to understand okay what is the scenario what is the need okay why aws comes into the picture okay that we need to understand so to understand this we have one use case here so can you able to see that image so in that image what exactly will be the let's say this is a person person name is alex okay so alex what will be the alex is doing alex is launching one shopping portal okay alex is running the business of shopping portal now day-to-day -day business is fine alex and alex also purchased some hardware setup for uh, to maintain that shopping portal okay let's say alex purchased the four servers can you able to see these four servers yes or no the screen is visible for everyone is it visible yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, what is the Alex? Alex is what? Alex is a person who is uh, launching this application. Uh, what dealing with this online shopping application? And Alex purchased four servers. Okay. But what Alex will decide now? And to increase the business, to increase the sale, Alex will announce the different strategies, sale strategy, like Black Friday sale, holiday sale. Okay. So the strategy will work fine. The customers are increasing, engaging. Okay, but this four servers are not capable to handle the load of the customers. Okay, so what Alex thinks now Alex needs to buy extra servers, extra more servers. Okay, needs to increase the capacity of the servers or add some extra server or configure new servers. But that is quite difficult for Alex being uh, with the hardware kind of thing, hardware kind of setups. Okay, so Alex need to purchase the new server that will definitely charge uh, much amount so uh, according with the servers alex need to purchase some required configure infrastructure devices routers and all these things okay so that is quite difficult so what will be the solution is now alex is one of the friend of the alex suggests that you can migrate your application with aws so alex what can do alex will thinking so how we can migrate so alex migrate their application with aws and alex will purchase or alex will use the 
uh, infrastructure that is provided by AWS service provider. And what is the exactly uh, the what we can say, what will be the benefit is so whenever the traffic will increase on the Alex uh, application at that time, the servers will be up automatically. OK, that feature is called auto scaling feature that is provided by the AWS services. OK, AWS infrastructure service. So the server will be automatically scaled when the traffic will increase and when traffic will decrease, the server number up decreases. OK, so these things so without wasting a much amount of cost, much amount of money, the Alex can easily manage the traffic on the particular shopping portal. So that's why we require AWS. OK, so that is the main functionality of the AWS. OK, that is about the introduction of AWS. Now, AWS is what? If I see technical definition, what is the technical definition for AWS? It is a cloud platform which offer more than 200 services and data centers through the whole world. OK, so pay, what is the another benefit of AWS? Why we can choose AWS? Because as we discussed, it is scalable. It is scalable means we can is able to increase or decrease the number of servers as per the requirement. OK, then flexibility. Flexibility means what? Let's say suppose if I want to keep my application in uh, any uh, Ubuntu operating system, Mac operating system or Windows operating system. So that kind of flexibility, uh, if I want uh, four CPUs, eight GB of memory, 14 GB of memory, I can able to choose that kind of uh, flexibility options. So that kind of flexibility will be provided by AWS. So that is the another feature. Okay, next feature is security. If I talk about security, so AWS provides the security for our application. They can use different uh, security mechanism, like uh, they can say they have uh, IAM management services for the security uh, that will be provided by AWS. Then after that, uh, if I turn to the security, second thing, they can use the different encryption algorithms, encryption strategies, the, which make our, our application secure. Okay, then after that cost effectiveness. So if I compare, let's say if I go with on-premises setup, on-premises setup is one spot. So hardware, typical hardware uh, setup. Okay, so on in the organization. So if I go with this typical hardware setup, so definitely cost is high. Okay, because to maintain that hardware configuration on-premises setup, we require, we need to hire some, uh, with, uh, what we can say, specialist. Uh, we need to pay the salary, the organization need to pay to salary to this maintenance uh, engineers. Okay, then after that, what we need to do is, uh, let's say, uh, what uh, let's say, suppose uh, if I need to purchase a new server as per the requirements, then I need to uh, give input the lot of cost in that. Okay, so uh, as compared to the on-premises configuration setup, so if I migrate with AWS, so definitely the cost will be less. Okay, we can't say it is completely uh, that much, uh, but it is definitely lesser than on-premises setup. So if we configure app our application with AWS. So that are the some benefits of AWS, okay? So now what is the another feature of AWS is global infrastructure. Okay, let me show you that global infrastructure, what is exactly it is. Okay, but before that, uh, before moving to this global infrastructure, what I need to discuss is, uh, this is about the AWS feature that we are discussing, right? Now, can you able to see here? Let's say if I show, let me share the screen. The screen is not visible, I think, for everyone. So, let me share it again. Okay. Now you are able to say able to see the screen, everyone. Hello. Hello. Yeah. So basically, if I talk about, uh, let's say, why we choose AWS that we discussed, so we have this many features. Okay, but let's say why we need to choose, uh, why we need to get a certified with AWS certifications. Okay, we have different different uh, certifications available that is given by AWS provided by AWS as per the. Uh, what we can say interest or fun, uh, job role of each and every uh, employee. Okay, so why we this choose? Why we need to choose this AWS certifications? Okay, so first we discuss the certification journey of AWS. 
okay if you want to migrate your career in aws if you uh, well uh, aws certified uh, professional what what will be the impact is so impact will be on the definitely on your job okay you get a uh, job roles uh, as uh, many job roles multiple job roles are available for this aws domain as well as we can say we will we'll get a salary hike as well okay because the salary packages will be uh, quite uh, higher for this aws okay so that is the thing and we are able to understand uh, let's say suppose if i go with this certification aws solution architect associate certification then what will be the benefit is so benefit is that let's say we are able to uh, understand each and every service or we can say multiple services in depth and hands on knowledge for uh, services in depth okay then we uh, able to optimize the cost of organization let's say we if we understand if uh, let's say uh, if we uh, uh, we have multiple services by provided by aws but if we understand this service is useful in that particular scenario and this will be cost that much amount okay so we can able to save the organization cost if you save the organization cost definitely organization will pay more for you okay organization will offer the salary more for you so that is the thing so that is the main purpose we have to choose this aws certification parts okay and let's uh, which certification we are dealing with aws solution architect associate certification so what that aws solution architect certification so what is the role of aws solution architect okay as a solution architect you need to design architectural diagram of the application and you need to uh, utilize maximum aws services with cost optimization cutting technique for organization that is the role of your aws solution architect so you need to optimize the cost okay by choosing appropriate services as a aws solution architect associate okay that is the thing now let me show you the different certification so we can go with the certification journey are you able to see this <clears throat> this is a foundational level certification we have so what is that foundational level certification is so in the foundational level of certification we have aws cloud practitioner certification then aws ai practitioner certification so this is a foundational level okay but but what is the thing we have a foundational level certification professional level certification associate level certification specialty level certification okay the network uh, what we can say so there are four ways four different categories of certification but all the categories are not correlated with each other okay let's say suppose if i don't want to uh, go with this foundational i can directly go with this professional then it's fine okay it's fine it is not dependent with each other okay so in the foundational level of certification we have the cloud practitioner certification then aws solution architect uh, aws ai practitioner now if i talk about uh, the another certification let's say this is a devops engineer aws uh, solution architect professional so devops related pro specialty certification so it will pro it will give the study of the devops related aws services for the devops specialist then we have developer uh, aws developer certification then administrator data engineer machine learning security specialty certification related to aws so we have different domains certifications are available and if i talk about this aws solution architect one so this certification once we done this certification okay what it should be valid for 3 years and we after 3 years we can able to uh, what we can say we can able to uh, again uh, renew that certification after the 3 years so that is the thing uh, for the aws solution architect certification that, so that is about the certification journey now what we need to discuss is the next point why the aws is most popular okay which one which i mentioned earlier that is global infrastructure what is that global infrastructure so let me show you global infrastructure map so global infrastructure means what the aws uh, data centers so data centers basically uh, when we maintain our application so what will be the scenario is in our application uh, our application will be stored uh, in server okay we can maintain our application on server and that server will be uh, will be hosted in uh, data where it's visible okay fine fine raj so that particular application is uh, uh, handled by these data centers okay 
So we have a data centers, right? So in the AWS, they have uh, data centers in the worldwide. Okay, how many data centers are there? Let's just let's discuss one by one. Okay, but before that, what is a data center? Can anyone tell me? What is the meaning of data center? If you are aware, then we can start the discussing on uh, the data center and global infrastructure concept of AWS. So that's, <clears throat> yes, how many data centers are there? Data centers servers, servers and infrastructure. Maintained. In stock, yeah. All the security. Yes, correct. So AWS is having their uh, total how many? Uh, what we can say in AWS concept, uh, they have um, established their data center all over the country. Okay, so there will be how many regions are there? 33 launch regions. So what is that global infrastructure? So they can spread uh, the AWS data center spread worldwide. That is called global infrastructure. So 33 regions. Okay, regions means what? Region is nothing but one geographical location. Okay, your geographical location. If I talk about geographical location, so it should be, uh, let's say, suppose, uh, if I say Mumbai, uh, if I, in India, if I we are in India, and let's say if I launch my application in Mumbai, so Mumbai is what? Mumbai is a region. Okay, region is nothing but one geographical location from the world map. You Are you able to see this map is there? So in that map, you are able to see the uh, green color dot. So green color dots are nothing but this is called as a regions. Okay, this is a Canada West region. Okay, in that Canada West region, they have a data center. AWS launched their data center. They launched their data center in 2023. And what is the another thing is that availability zones. Okay, so what is that availability zones? So inside a single region, okay, for a single region, we have at minimum three availability zones. Availability zones means it consists of a group of data centers. Availability zones are nothing but again, it is a group of data centers. Okay, and uh, let's say, suppose if I talk about India, in India, suppose let's say we are launch our application in Mumbai region. And in Mumbai region, we have three availability zones. Availability zones are nothing again, but it is locations, geographical locations, where they can establish their data center. And each availability zones are connected with each other via fiber optical cable, fiber optical cable, high speed cable. Okay, so let's say why we require multiple, why they can establish a multiple availability zone for a single region. What is the purpose? Because let's say, suppose if any data center or any uh, any region or any availability zone will be, uh, what we can say, stop or we can say some uh, due to some crashes, some issues, if any availability zone get down, okay. So immediately the backup will be available for another availability zones. So so it will be not affect the uh, availability, okay, availability of your application. So your application will be available continuously at the any any sort of time. Let's say if, uh, let's say suppose if I launch uh, any application inside a Mumbai region uh, with the availability zone one. So let's say uh, availability zone one means AZ1, okay. Availability zone name must be stands with AZ, BZ, small alphabets. Okay, and I am having three availability zone. I established my application in three availability zone in Mumbai region. Okay, if any one availability zone fails or get down, so immediately my backup is available with another availability zone. So I am, my application is still accessible to other users. So that is the main purpose, main thing about the availability zone and region. Then inside the global infrastructure, the next thing, this is very important thing, CloudFront props. Okay, that is called as a uh, CDN. This is a CDN, Content Delivery Network. So let's take one use case, one scenario to understand this uh, CloudFront locations or edge caches, what is it means inside a global infrastructure. So let's say, suppose if we are, uh, let's, say, let's consider example of Netflix. Okay, Netflix, if I talk about the Netflix, so Netflix is launched, when Netflix is launched, launch, let's say if I watching a Hollywood series of a Netflix in India, but it is launched in US, right? So how it is accessible in India? So it is accessible with the help of this cloud front. Okay, Netflix application, uh, that Hollywood series will accessible for Indian customers or any other country customers within a few seconds of sort of time without any latency, with high speed, they can available. This, they can be accessible. 
with the help of this CDN. So what will be the scenario? Let's say, let's consider uh, here, suppose this is, this is the, uh, we can say, uh, yeah, this is a London region. Here I launched some application, okay? And this is the another region from, and I, uh, I'm trying to access this application, that OIO region. Okay, let's say in the London region, if you launch any application, and if uh, customers are trying to access that application from another region. So what happened? They can find the nearest, they can establish their data centers to the nearest age location. Okay, they can find and they can cache that application from the original uh, region. Let's say original region is London. They can cache the application from London region to the nearest age location. And from after the caching from this nearest age location, it will be accessible to the Ohio region. Okay, so this caching of the application will be work with this concept of a regional age caches. So uh, this is basically to uh, get your application access uh, without any latency, with a high speed, with from any location. Okay, so that is the main motto of this CloudFront props. Okay, then we have a local zones are also are there, direct connection. So direct connection is a different thing. So direct connection is, let's say, suppose if I want to connect my on-premises setup with cloud setup, then we can use this direct connection location. Okay, local zone is for a particular locality. If you want to, uh, if you want to restrict our application to the particular local zones, then we can use this local zones as well. And wavelength zone is for the 5G uh, applications, 5G, 5G smarter devices or 5G applications. Okay, so this is the about the complete global infrastructure. So now this is a, this is the introduction about global infrastructure. Now next thing what we need to do is we need to understand. So AWS will provide a 200 plus services, but which one is the topmost services which will be using uh, for each and every application or which will popular services we can see. So if you are able to see that image, so in that image, what exactly we can get the Amazon CloudFront services there. Okay, so CloudFront service is based, uh, SNS service is there, RDS is there, S3 is there, EC2 is there, VPC is there, IAM is there. So there are these popular services are there and many more services provided by AWS. Now in the today's uh, session, we have to start with the one of the important service that is IAM service. It is related to user access management service. Okay, so to understand this IAM service, IAM stands for identity. Okay, what is identity? Identity can be anyone. The identity might be a person. Identity might be a, we can say a person, we can create the access uh, for the person. So why we require this IAM service? Okay, let's assume that suppose if we are working in any organization. Okay, and we are the, uh, we are the dealing with the, fresher employees, the hiring of a fresher employee. Let's say if we get the intimation or we if we get the invitation from the HR or any update from the HR. Okay, so what, what update? Let's say HR will inform us that uh, the this uh, 10 employees will be joining in the next week. Okay, what you need to do as a cloud administrator or as the IAWS uh, cloud associated, what you need to do, you need to give the access to these employees of the different services, okay, different AWS services. So we need to provision access, okay, to the all users as per their job roles, as per their working. Okay, so uh, so identity access management is basically manage the access of AWS services with the different users. So that is the thing. Okay, so this is a, that's why we require to give the like, access to those all users. We can have this IAM service. Okay, so how we can give the access in the IAM service? So let's take hands on for this. So what we can do, let me share the screen. But before that, what will be the thing that we need to follow is, so let's say here, uh, we let's say, suppose if you open AWS console first time. Okay, uh, if you open your AWS console first time, are you able to see the screen? Okay, so how we can open AWS console, go to the google.com, let me share the screen. So we have a different, different services actually. And uh, IAM service is basically used for uh, to give the access to the different user as per their job roles, as per their functionality, as per their requirement. Okay, because uh, we need to follow the principle, this privilege principle. 
okay let's say suppose if we are giving access of aws services to developer so we only need to give the development related uh, service access okay of aws service access to that person if i want to give access to the database administrator so what we can do we can give the database related service access only not to hold the services they are not able to access other services they can able to access only their job related services so that things we can manage with this i am service okay so here let's say we can open aws console okay once you open your aws console you can type in the google you can able to open your aws console okay so here what we can do here you can see we can create an aws account here this is create an aws account now when you when we say that create a aws account there are two ways first is root user either we can create uh, there will be two Um, uh, excuse me, there is no voice. I'm not able to hear. The screen is freeze. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Just... I, 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 there is no voice. Yeah, no. just a moment. I'm just checking on that. Audible? Hello? Yeah, now it's audible. Yeah. So, okay, so basically, uh, whenever we are visiting first time, AWS console, if I open this AWS console, okay. So in the AWS console, what will be the thing is that we have to create account by root user. Okay, root user, root user is the main user, okay. So when we create a root account or root user account, we need to give the email ID for the root user, okay. Inside a root user, you can create a different IAM user because you directly, you can't create an IAM user. For creating an IAM user, you require at least root user first you need to create account with a root user okay and then you can create account with i am user okay so here i am already we already have that account with the root user so what we can do uh, so signups are these steps are exactly same uh, it is a simple step you need to just put your email id and other details and you can create account on this aws console okay once you create an account what you can need to do you need to click on sign in you need to put your root user email address. You need to put the password like this. Okay, and you need to click on sign in. Okay, so this is the way. So we'll uh, discuss in the actual session as well in detail. Okay, uh, so how we can create this uh, procedure, how we can go with all this procedure and all these things, the, all the things we can discuss. Okay, now you're able to see congratulations this message okay the screen is visible for everyone once we create a root user account we got the screen and now we can able to go to the here that's it just a minute sign in into the console okay i'm already having that root account what we can do so you can once you set up that root account you can directly sign in ah, okay after sign in you can able to see this is my console screen and in that console screen, I am able to see that which services uh, recently used by me. Okay. And then this is the billing related information you can able to see in the AWS console. And from here, this, if you can see, uh, scroll, click on this, you are able to see the services over there. Okay. And uh, let's say after that, let's say if I want to go to the IAM service. Okay. First, we can show IAM service. So in the IAM service, we can create uh, multiple sub users and we can give the access to them sub users. So that is the thing. So in this way, we can navigate 
uh, the IAM users and all these things here. So you can see this is the IAM service. So how we can go to the IAM service? In the search box, IAM type IAM service. I can open the IAM service. Now in the IAM service, what we need to do is, first we need to create a users. Then uh, why we require users? Because we need to add the users inside our AWS root account. Okay, and we need to give the access to those users related to their job roles. So that is a use case. So how we can create a user? It's simple. Just we need to click on create user. We can give the name of the user. Let's say this is the name of the user, this uh, Disha, uh, uh, whatever it may be. Okay, then we need to provide the user access. So what is the user access, guys? User access means they uh, we need to give the console that console access for that particular user or not. Yes, we need to give that access. So we I am selecting that one. Then this is the I am user. I am user means uh, we can say sub user, sub user inside the main root user that is called I am user. Now the it will ask for the password. You want uh, auto generated password for that user, or you can provide any custom password for that user. So in my case, I can choose the auto generated password. Okay. Then after that, what I what will be the next thing is what I need to do is uh, show the password. If you want to show the password, you can click on this. Otherwise, uh, the next thing is that you, you want to give the permission to that user, whichever user is created that per, that user particular user can able to uh, sign in uh, means change their password again. If you want to give the change password permission, then you can select this. Otherwise, you can unselect it. Simply click on next. Okay, next next thing is that the important thing attach policy. Attach policy means rules. Okay, these are the permissions actually. So which kind of permission you can give to that particular user? Which service related permission? Which different AWS service permission you can provide to this particular user? That is called policies. Okay, so let's say if I if I select administrator access. Okay, admin access. If I select this admin access. Admin access means uh, that particular user is able to access all the AWS services. If you want to restrict with particular service, you can give the name of that service and you can uh, will uh, you can change uh, what we can say. You can select that policy related to that particular service. So in this way, we can assign the policy and we can click on next and simply we can click on create user. So if, if at that time, you can see this particular user is created. We uh, give the restriction that access restriction as well and here you can if you download that csv file of that user okay let's say download the csv file so this is a credentials file which will be required for that user once a user will log in with that credentials now user is able to use the services which uh, the which services uh, the policy let's say here we have administrator access so that disha user is able to use all the services but if I give specific service access to that user, that user can able to access only that specific service. So that will be discussed later on in the actual coming sessions. So how these things is managed in detail. Okay. So let's say suppose if I give any particular service access to that person and that person is trying to access some another service, she or he, she or he able to access or not, that we can check. Okay. In the later on coming session practicals. So that's it from my side. So about this is actually just the introduction. So when we start with actual session, we, we can go with each and everything in detail and depth. Okay. From account creation and all this process. So I think uh, this is done from my side.